There we go. <laughs> All right. What's up, everybody? Um, welcome to the Laura Cross podcast. I believe this is episode nine. So we're we're getting pretty pretty deep in numbers, almost double digits. And uh, I wanted to bring on one of the first podcasts that I did was with um, this man, um, Mike Larkin. And uh, yeah, it was just a really good and deep conversation. So I was like, hey, I would love to have you on my podcast sometime once I figure out how to do podcasts. And so I figured it out and here we are. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be on your show. I was so happy to have you on the LFC podcast and the On the Mic with Mike series. So I, it's a pleasure to do your podcast. You do a lot of great work. And for me, it's just a friend talking to another friend. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, I feel like those are the best type of episodes, really. Um, uh, yeah, I feel like that's what people want to hear. Not like, you know, necessarily something contrived or like, here's every single question that I'm going to ask you. And so you can prepare your answers. <laughs> Absolutely. I think with my platform, I always like to provide a mixed bag, like it's serious, but at the same time, we're at the end of the day, we're people. So let's have a fun conversation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I actually feel like, um, what I wanted to delve into a little bit initially is something a little different that I haven't um, talked about much before. Uh, so more the um, mental health, mental well-being side of the industry, because I think um, I feel like the industry not only tends to sort of draw a little more um, uh, emotionally fragile people. I'm not exactly sure why um but there seems to be a somewhat higher percentage of um uh i don't know bipolar type um disorder within models travel models that i uh work with and you know wonderful people but they struggle with that pretty um pretty regularly and you know normally they're they're quite vocal about it too which is cool um and I know that you have had some of your own um, type of things that you have been working through and seem to be doing wonderfully well with. And so maybe you could give a little bit of um, personal account of what that looks like. Cause I, um, I have no, you know what I mean? I have no personal um, bearing on any of this. So it's a matter of sometimes a lot of us get in our own heads, right? But also at the same time, you feel as if like your surroundings are against you when they're really not. But also at the same time, it's like you really don't know how I feel. You know what I'm saying? How can you tell me how I'm feeling when you're not living it? You're not in my shoes. And for me, it was just a case of I dealt with a lot of stuff. There was some family stuff going on and there were some personal demons that I was going through and I went about it the wrong way. What I did was I, I'm an epileptic, right? So I take levitatrin and lamotrigine. So I mixed medicine that I should not have mixed with, you know, that. And I'll be honest with you, what I mixed was um, hydroxy cuts, which is stuff that you would take. Uh, yeah. Yep. For epileptics, it's not a good thing. I was moody. I was cranky. A lot of stuff I don't even remember, but I just kept taking it because it made me feel good. And, you know, I'm constantly on the go. The adrenaline's going. But at the same time, that's not the way to look at it. And I think a lot of people dive into that because it makes them feel good, but they don't realize the consequences that can surround them, not just for themselves, for the people around them. And a lot of people extract themselves from their lives. So I think for me, uh, my solace was always my religion and my faith. And I think that was the one thing that really you know, deterred me away from that was just, it's like, God dang, man, I'm losing my faith. You know what I'm saying? Not only am I losing myself, but I'm losing my faith because I grew up, man, my uncle was very religious. My yeah. mom used to teach Sunday school for a little bit. And for me, it was just being surrounded by, you know, God always providing me the platform to do what I do and giving me the blessings that I have with my family and friends. And I was steering away for that. So for me, it was a lot of self-reflection, which I think a lot of people need to do, just meditate, calm down. But at the same time, just, you know, get right with yourself and know that you are worth it and that you have a purpose and your purpose will be succeeded and you will continue to progress. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think that, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think everyone needs something that they care about more than um, themselves. I think that is just 
crucial to every single human being um, in the entire world. Um, and I don't, yeah, I don't think anyone is uh, mentally healthy without, without that, for sure. Even if it's, you know, um, a, a couple of neighbors that you're best friends with, you know, if maybe a lot of your family has passed off, passed away or whatnot. Um, yeah, no, that makes complete sense. Or maybe it's, um, a bunch of your, you know, industry friends that you become really, really incredibly close with, um, you know, especially if, uh, you become estranged due to this type of a profession, which, I mean, who knows if that has a, a link into some of the, um, higher amounts of, you know, issues than usual, because I know a lot of people when they are outed, um, it causes a lot of, um, it, yeah, some of their families just straight up, just cut them off. Like you're, you're not, you're not ours anymore, which. Yeah. And, and thinking about it too, like for me, my family, like I said, and uh, for me, I, I love my family to death. I love my mother. I love my father, but my father, and I'll always say this and he knows this, he's always had an anger issue. You know what I'm saying? He's dealt with anger issues a lot. And I think what that is, you know, sometimes you need to realize, like you do realize like your words do have an impact on people, not just your son, but around people around you. And he's a straight up businessman, but it's like, yeah. you know, it's unhealthy to have that. And he's a very successful at what he does, but it's like, it's very unhealthy to always be angry at the time, all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing, not just in a parent or a child or what have you, just people in general. It's like holding in that type of anger. Sometimes you need to speak up and say what you need to say, but also at the same time, it's like, you have your life. You woke up this morning and it may be the most minuscule thing, Laura, but you woke up, you're right. brushing your teeth, you're eating, and then you're going out into the world. Just be happy. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, one of the biggest myths, um, especially in America, is that um, you are your own person and you're, you don't affect everything else because we just, by existing, we affect everyone that we're around all day. We affect the environment, you know, whether we recycle, we don't recycle, um, you know, we, we affect, yeah, the environment on what sort of plants we decide to plant in our landscaping. Um, you know, if we decide to keep the tree or cut the tree down or um, what sort of products we buy and how much waste we make. Um, yeah, so people just thinking that their choices and their moods and the way they are don't affect other people is a, is a complete complete myth like we're not you know yeah we're um independent like the um we get to make our own choices but they affect absolutely everything and that's just how it is i what was that movie like the butterfly effect or, butterfly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> feel like that's a a good throw out right here Oh, absolutely. I mean, you look at the depiction of that movie where he's just like he gets in his own thoughts. He's going back to a time that he wishes he could recreate. And it's very apparent because a lot of us in our lives wish that we could create, recreate some times and moments. But unfortunately, those time and moments have passed and it's up, on, up to us how we move onward and upward to how we can, you know, leave that in the past behind us and just continue to make a new. And I look at it from a stance, too, as well. Sometimes the past can help us. And for me, my past was I've always knew when I was. I was a very upbeat, energetic, nerdy kid from Long Island. And I'll say that here right now. You know what I'm saying? I was the biggest nerd. I used to collect a lot of Backstreet Boys and Britney Spears stickers going to the path mark. I used to love to do it. That's what I loved. And that's what I enjoyed. You know, pop culture was my thing. Professional wrestling was my thing. Yeah. And that was and that was always what I tell people, just be yourself and just always go out there and just be who you are. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't being who I was. I was becoming another person. And I think sometimes we have to, uh, you know, we feel like we have to change yeah. with society and the times, but it's like at the end of the day, if you're happy being you, then why, you know, why flip the script, so to speak, you know? So, yeah. Did you start having um, some of the trouble when you were trying to be who you thought that society wants you to be or some of some social pressures or or what was what was that 
so for me, I look at it from a stance too. Like I've been doing this for six years, the podcasting thing, right? And I love it. I've gotten to work with a lot of amazing people. I'm looking at one of them now. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're very welcome. Uh, no, but it's just like, I'm not just a podcaster. Like, you know what I'm saying? I come onto this and I'm happy and I am. I mean, I'm doing my thing and I love it, but I'm just like, there's more to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't understand like what I'm going through. You know what I'm saying? You don't yeah. understand. Like I'm actually a normal person. Like, and it's just that the stress of this, sometimes you get burnt out with this. And right. it was just for me, like, again, like some stuff that was going on with home, uh, just for me, yeah, that was mainly like it. It's like, I'm more to this than just what you see in front of a camera or microphone, but I'm like, right yeah it was that and just the burnout and for me it's just like really realizing because you think what's negative is actually a positive and I'm like you know what this is cool because I get to help people and I've always said this and I say this when yeah. I'm inspiring through words and actions and touching people's hearts and I mean I think that's the heart pun intended of the matter so I mean that was more for me like the burnout and just like you know what man I'm more to this actually look at me as a human being you know yeah, no, I think that that makes complete sense. Um, I also think that people shouldn't be afraid um, to take a break, like right. if you need it. Just, you know, if you are going down a bad road, you feel that burnout. Um, I even think, and, and especially like, I mean, I know right around maybe the end of November, I just got done traveling for the majority of, you know, five or six months or whatever. And I was like, man, I'm wiped. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, I just, you know, you just sort of have to have like that way extra action, like um, activation energy to get started in the day. And I was like, man, I need a freaking break. You know what I mean? So I just saw what I could reschedule like further down. And I was like, I'm gonna go on a vacation. I'm not, I, I, I'm not allowed to work. I'm not allowed to. I like let people know I'm like not really gonna be texting very much. Love y'all though. Love you. <laughs> you have to be like that. And yeah. I think what's great about it too is like, no, I've had that where it's like, yo, I don't wanna go on social media. I don't wanna text anybody. It's like plain out, just leave me alone. Let me have this vacation. Let me have this time in myself and let me have the peace of mind. We all go through it. So no, I don't blame you. That's how you have to look at it. It's like, you're not being yeah. a dick. Like, I need my space, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's exactly right. And um, yeah, and I, I took like a another full, almost two weeks um, right at Christmas, which was really cool. Like, I mean, I literally didn't do anything, but just like work out and hang out with family. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the simple moments and that's the time that we need is with our family so absolutely that's how, that's how it's got to be yeah yeah no it was great um we like well one of the kids got um laser tag and that was really cool like he I, got like this kick butt like laser tag set for like four people so we would just switch up like tournaments you know this team of four this team of four and then anyways, I just thought that was neat. Like everybody took part in this ridiculous outdoor laser tag thing. Like, I, I don't know how many families get to do that. <laughs> but no, it's the simple things. I mean, I wasn't the laser tag kid and I love laser tag, but for me, just going out in the backyard, have the basketball hoot up, just sh shooting hoops and just, you know, just chilling like that or riding a bike. That was my simple thing. You know what I'm saying? Just shooting hoops, riding a bike. I was happy. So I get that laser tag. And that's what a lot of people even do a lot of nowadays because we're so stifled with the video games and that's cool. It's like, let's actually go outside. You know what I'm saying? Nobody goes outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Well, cool. Yeah. So, all right. Let's talk a little bit about... Um, LFC, uh, Laundry Fighting, uh, well, I'll let you introduce. Tell me about LFC and tell me how you got involved and um, just sort of your story there. So for, as far as LFC, for those that don't know what it is, it's Lingerie Fighting Championships. And I'm just going to say this now because I am on your show. You, my friend, are a prospect. So you can check out Laura Cross's profile on LingerieFC.com. Yes, <laughs> there it is. So for me, it's it's a stance of it's women's mixed martial arts. It was like it started as a mockumentary for like UFC. And Sean Donnelly, the CEO, is amazing at what he does. So shout out to Sean. Uh, it started as a mockumentary. And then it became this big thing around 2015 and doing my research 
on it. It's funny because I had interviewed um, Allie Parker, who has also has done sessions wrestling and professional wrestling. And as I was doing notes and really preparing for the interview, I saw this character, Allie Baby Doll Parks. And then I in, then I really did more into LFC and looking into it. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. Because, you know, there is women's mixed martial arts like you have Invicta, which is Shannon Knapp's promotion. There's yeah. women UFC. And I'm like, this is a nice interpretation of sex appeal and professional wrestling mixed yeah. with MMA. And it's cool and has that reality show vibe to it. Yeah. So, what? This is not bad. And also it coincides with the session world because a lot of girls that are in LFC are sessions wrestlers. So I'm like, I want to dive into this more. So I started interviewing talent such as there was one Serena Honey Punch Kyle. You know, she's sweet as honey, but she packs a hell of a punch. And there were people <laughs> like Jesse El Toro Santos and Danielle Cowbell St. Pierre and so many on-screen figures and Sean Donnelly himself. So I'm like, you know what? I want to keep doing more of these. And by the time yeah, we yeah. got forward... Uh, they needed an official podcast host, and I had talked about it, but, you know, it finally came into fruition around the 2019 time period, and Beauty, Strength, and Dominance was born, and it's funny because, it's funny because the name, and I say this with a lot of, um, with, and I'm not going to try to get emotional here, but God dang, man, it, it does hit me in the hearts because my mother is my biggest influence in my life, is one of the strongest females that I know, and uh, the Beauty, Strength, and Dominance moniker is uh, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are, and I wanted to have a female empowerment mindset, and uh, that's yeah. where we're I think that's awesome. Um, yeah, and I, I think you are very, uh, very pro-female, um, female empowerment and uh, yeah it's it's very very obvious um and I guess I've never really thought about it but the session world like largely is largely is that mm-hmm. to be honest it is I mean, <laughs> I, I, like, I guess that's why I love it so much I really thought about it <laughs> Jennifer Thomas and I had this conversation who was Jenny Bloody Valentine and LFC Jen's yeah. like well it's like LFC is pretty much like sessions session girls and I'm like it is to really think about it yeah I just think um I love that it involves um on like a an actual real time of uh, a performance it's like it's acrobatic it's it's acting it's um you know they have all of this choreography like and i i think that it's i think it's really really impressive um and i think it's really awesome and fun like it's so complicated you know like (laughs) Agreed. And I look at it from a stance too, for those that are naysayers of it. I mean, if you look at the alumni that have come from LFC, yeah. Roxy Brownhouse Michaels, who was Renee Michelle, and she's doing her thing on all elite wrestling and all around. Uh, we've had Shelly Martinez, who was in WWE. There's talents that are the array and really of the wide variety of here's WWE, here's TNA, here's Ring of Honor, here's the independent wrestling scene. We have it from everybody. There's a conglomerate that you've seen on TV that have participated in LFC. And I mean, besides session girls and everything in general, there's people that have done adult work. It's a variety for everybody. And that's what we yeah. need in is variety. Yeah, I completely agree. And um, man, all you, you gotta be an athlete to do all yep. that. You gotta be an athlete, like, like flexible and a lifter. And you know what I mean? Great body awareness, part gymnast. Like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, that's the thing I always tell people. Don't come into it thinking it's just girls rolling around in lingerie and they don't realize like the fitness and the finesse and everything that goes into it. I mean, it's like you have to be in the right amount of shape. You have to go in there and make sure everything is up from your cardio and everything. Don't pretty much I say to put it bluntly to you, Laura, don't come in here and bullshit. Don't come here and pussyfoot. Just come, if you're serious about this, be serious. Don't act. Don't fuck around with it. To put it bluntly, don't fuck around with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, you're, uh, yeah, your partners out there are depending on you, you know, to be able to perform the moves and keep them safe as well as, as yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think as someone I do the podcast for, but I'm also very serious on people who I interview because, again, though I love giving people the platform to tell their stories. And for me, always with interviewing, it's about accommodation and comfortability. And I want to make my guests feel comfortable. And I look at it from a stance too, as well. It's like, if you're going to come on here and be like, meh, meh about it, like, I don't want to work with you. You know what I'm saying? And I'll say that because if people don't have the passion and they don't have that fire that they see with the LFC product and don't really have that same vision that it is, I mean, it's just like, you know, then why are you, why are you, are you wasting my time? You know what I'm saying? I don't mean, but it's like, why are you wasting my time? 
Yeah, I was uh, I was super bummed. They um, LFC had an opening, um, and I got emailed to be able, you know, to ask for me to come fill in, and I really wanted to. And um, I was like on a tour, you know, oh. with like all these deposits paid. And I can't just be like later. <laughs> no, I, I I completely understand, but I'm sure we'll be on a uh, we'll see each other at an LFC event. I mean, yeah. I was the announcer for the last one. I can't wait to meet you and give you a big old hug. Yeah, I I was uh I was super bummed though. <laughs> I, I don't blame you, but at the same stance, Laura, I gotta say, I always say trust the process and the journey, and that journey will lead you to LFC. And personally, I think you're gonna be a great fit for what you do in the sessions world and your overall vibrancy and your cadence. I think you'll do very well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was gonna tell you, I got to uh work with Jillian Hex. Um, Yo, nice. She's so cool. Like yeah. She's so cool. She's such a good actress. Um, and she's fit and she's like, and she's strong. Um, yeah, she's just whole, whole package, like total, total triple threat. <laughs> he is one of my absolute favorites. A very intense performer and a very entertaining performer inside the yeah. LFC and the LFC auspices. But outside that ring, she is probably one of the most sweetest people in the world. Much love to Jolene. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, she's she has a great sense of humor too. Uh, it was like right around Halloween time, and I don't know how we got onto it, but we got we started sending each other topless selfies with the scariest masks we could find back and forth. Like, love that. I love that. I don't know why. <laughs> Well, that sounds like something Jolene would do. And I, I look at it from a stance too as well. Not only is she entertaining in that stance, one of the funniest things she ever told me was, it's like, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to kick your butt. But hey, you want to go out for ice cream after that? I'm like, that's nice. You give them a little sourness, but then you get them sweet. You're like a sour patch all over at the one. You know, I think I know how that started. I think I had asked her like, hey, can I get a contact photo? And she said, okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> so anyways, that was hilarious. <laughs> that is her contact photo though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I followed through. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh yeah, um what else was I going to say? Oh, me and uh Sarah Brooke are going to be shooting um in March. So put that on put that on the the calendar. Um, we're just going to call for customs and see what we get and shoot all night. Oh my goodness. I'm smiling about that. That's a double, that's a double team right there. That's a tag team. You and Sarah Brooke, Sarah, the beast Brooke. Nice. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's going to be brave enough to try to get a double session. Cause I think they might die. <laughs> I mean, as someone who has seen Sarah, not just from the cat fighting side of things in the sessions, what she did in LFC against Lauren, the animal Fogel with me, and Bella, and with so many people that she got to work during the Sturgis event, as well as LFC in Las Vegas back at yeah. LFC 31. Girl's a beast and she, she brings it and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. She really freaking is like, she is my most intense, um, fight like to date. Um, the the me and Sarah like real cat fight that's like that's just it was it was so evenly matched it was just crazy like and we both had just a ridiculous pain tolerance and like our egos just as big as like our pain tolerance we're like we can't submit <laughs> that's some of the stuff that really makes for a lot of great matchups and fights because it's the overall thing where you're trying to tell a story and that's what combative nature is you're telling a story through your emotions and your body parts and it showcases through everything that you work over with the systematic dissection the joint manipulation and hell at the same time you're having fun all in the process so that's what really makes it worth it so i love it yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so what is on the horizon for you in 2022? For me, just to do like I did at the last LFC 35 Booty Camp 3D on Halloween, you know, do some more ring announcing. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I felt like Ricky Bobby holding that mic. I don't know what to do with my hand. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> After his first race, I was, I was nervous because usually I'm in front of the camera. I got my mic here and we're doing podcasts, but I'm like, right. man, like you don't we're realize. Right. Yeah. And, this is, 
And this is live on pay-per-view, Laura. It's live on pay-per-view and you're on demand and it's the website. But it was great because for me, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is one of the most touching stories I had at the event. Tommy Bell, who's a great artist, follow him on Instagram, at Tommy Bell Art. He was a judge at the event, right? Tommy comes in, he's all smiles, he's nervous. And I shake his hand and he looks at me and he goes, you know, Mike, it's an honor to shake your hand. And I'm like, that right there, here's why I touch in my heartstrings. Again, hey. growing up as a young kid, Long Island, New York, nerdy kid i'm just a dude that likes wrestling and pop culture and i think you start to realize it's like man like what you do has an effect and it brings and evokes emotions out of people so that really touched my heart and just hugging all those girls and seeing them and just the smiles it really it took it took it all in being at that fsw arena in las vegas nevada so that was a hell of a time so that is what i'm looking forward to in a 2022 more ring announcing more podcasting and really just living you know just living my life Heck yeah. Well, um, would you mind uh, shouting out where everyone can find you and your your podcast and all of your your work, learn a little more about you? Yes, ma'am. So you guys could check me out, stephenmikeshow.com. It's the old SM Show Podcast Network. Steve and I started it back in 2015. It's the Stephen Mike Show. We're laughing, we're singing, we're dancing, we're talking about things that are happening in current affairs. I got On the Mic with Mike on there, which you can hear this lovely face right over here on there. I interview people of all facets of life from the adult entertainment industry, session industry, wrestling industry. Hell, I've had people that I grew up watching on Nickelodeon, like Christy Knowings from all that. For me, it's cool. stuff like, thank you. It's stuff like that that really makes me happy. You know what I'm saying? Giving people the platform to tell their stories. And LFC, it's lingeriefc.com. It's lingeriefc.com slash podcast, where you can get the Beauty, Strength, and Dominance podcast. Audio platforms, you know, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, iHeartRadio. And of course, on my YouTube, just type in Mike Larkin, and it'll be on the YouTube. But you also, you can see this lovely face on the LFC podcast. <laughs> Shouting out you, Laura Cross. And now we're on Roku. Type in the LFC network. Download it on your Roku streaming device, where you can see, and I'm pointing at you again, this podcast that Laura and I did for LFC. <laughs> And so many great focuses. And we're on Roku. And if I ever told what I told you, I thought I was on Roku, I would have told you you were nuts back in the day. But no, <laughs> there's a lot of great stuff going on. And I'm so excited and exuberant to tell people at SM Show One MCL92 on Twitter. I'm an easy find. Just say hello, send me a message, and I'll talk to you. I'm very easy to converse with. And M Larkin and B and Larkin underscore 92 on Instagram. There's a lot of links, and I'll send them over to Laura. So yeah, you all can have them. That'd be perfect. I'll just, I'll just post them all. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. I, mean, I make sure to make myself accessible in all different forms of social media, not just for my work, but if anybody needs to talk, I'm an, I'm an easy listener. My DMs are always open. So I love helping people. Yeah. Well, cool. Is there anything else you want to say before we wrap? I do. I just want to say thank you so much for having me. And I definitely want to do a round two on your podcast and just come on. And we'll definitely do another one on the LFC podcast in the future this year, which I'm looking forward to because you always got a lot going on. And it's always a great time talking to you. As I said, I've had a blast doing this. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. I hope you all enjoy my work, support myself, support Miss Laura Cross, and just keep on living. And let's rock it in 2022. Let's rock it in 2022. <laughs> <laughs>